your type is the lens through which you're perceiving everything, yes. including yourself. Your so type, there's yeah. no way to direct the lens of That's your it. type at the lens of your type to know mm, which lens yeah, yeah. it is. Right. Your type structure, your personality structure is, in a sense, designed to not see itself. That's right. Yeah. And so we're discovering so much cool stuff because we have made this the foundation of That's what it. we're doing is that we need to know what these types actually are so that we can actually discover more about what these types actually are. The Big Hormone Enneagram. John Lukovich, uh, sexual self pres 45 wing, 458 trifecta. Hi, I'm David Gray, self pres sexual 9 with 1974 trifix. What up, it's Emika, I'm an 8 wing 7, sexual self pres with 854 fixes. Hi, I'm Nancy, I am a self pres social 3 wing 4 with a 369 trifix. If you like our podcast, guys, make sure you go like and subscribe on the Apple Podcast app. And if you really like us, you should definitely leave us a review. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Big Hormone Enneagram Show. So today I am with David and Joseph, Enneagrammer Typing Team. We're going to be talking about typing again. But before we get into that, we have some plugs by John's book. Instinctual Drives in the Enneagram. It's available on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble and wherever books are sold. Uh, also, please re- leave a review for the book, whether you've read it or not. <laughs> and uh, another thing that John's doing that might be of interest to the listeners is that he's doing a weekly study thing, study Zoom class mm-hmm. meeting thing every week. On I think he just had one on Friday. And he's planning to move that into Sundays. It's just for anyone who uh, wants to continue their studies of his book. I think it's just going to be discussions. And I don't know what that format's going to be. But it's a precursor to something, a bigger idea that John wants to start an Enneagram school. Because there is a need for structured learning of the Enneagram. I've talked to a bunch of people who've, who've uh, expressed interest in, like, are we going to do some kind of course? And John's the guy to do that. So. Did you, going, either of you guys go to that on Friday? No, I didn't. But going back to uh, the the whatever his live thing is, it's uh, is that on his website? How can people access? Oh that? yes, how can people find this information? I think it's either you can look on the Big Hormone in, uh, Instagram account, or if you're a member of the Facebook group, he posted about it. I don't know if he made a post on his website, which he okay. should. Uh, he should create a page for that so that people know, get the information. There's a suggested donation if you're going to take part in that. Um, but for next week, I'm sure he'll have more information, maybe a page on his website that people can go to. Um, all right. What's the second cool. one? What's the other thing? Oh, yeah. David, buy David's Trifix booklet. It's a visual guide to Trifix. It's $12 that's available on at anygrammar.com and on David's website. How are, how are sales doing on that? I mean, I know, but I'm just <laughs> asking you so you can talk about it. Yeah, I think they're pretty good. Um, it's, I don't know, what is it? Maybe 15 of them a month, 10, yeah. 15? People seem to like it. Yeah, and then I get, uh, <clears throat> let's see, I, prob- I probably get about five or 10 more through my site each okay. month. So, decent. All right, and then uh, Dark Arts Academy. Oh. Um, you know, we're going to be talking about typing today, so that's related. But uh, Dark Hat, learn how to type at Dark Hat Academy. We started this thing where um, people have been asking us for years to show them how we type. And every week we release weekly uh, a video where we discuss and type a celebrity. So you can look into what our process is. And, you know, what we're talking about today is how typing is kind of like a required modality if you really want to learn how to apply the Enneagram. You, you, on some level, the things that you learn when you get good at typing are the things that you're going to have to do in order to apply the Enneagram. And so a lot of these concepts that we talk about here on this podcast or you read in John's book or wherever else, like how do you actually apply that to real life situations? And so, yeah, for more information, you can go to Enneagram.com. It's $19 a month. You can cancel at any time. 
All right. So I said this on the last pod because, you know, I think people have been asking, I've seen comments here and there, like, why, why should I, why should I learn how to type? You know, why is that important? And I, I've recognized that uh, typing is always going to be a niche interest in the Enneagram. Um, there is kind of like a collective shadow of people not really knowing how uh, to type. And so there's a lot of weird stuff going around, like people saying, well, only you can type yourself, which is bullshit. Because we all know, like, if you, if you could just figure out your stuff on your own, you wouldn't need anything like the Enneagram. So uh, we want to talk today about how important typing is as a modality to, uh, to learn the Enneagram and why we believe it's a requirement if you want to apply the Enneagram, not just learn the concepts of the Enneagram, but actually apply it to real life. So I'll let you guys go start first if you have any thoughts. <clears throat> because typing is so difficult and because there hasn't really been any resource to learn how to type, basically really well. I feel like the culture of Enneagram teaching in the past has been, oh, you know, only you can type yourself and there's mm-hmm. no way for me to know. It's almost like people are saying that out of insecurity because they know that they can't do it yes. well or they're not, you know what I'm saying? So if you can do it well, this entire thing becomes real. But I feel like this whole only you can type yourself thing is partially just it's partially kind of a nine-ish sort of mm-hmm. uh, thing as well because there are so many nine teachers and people mm-hmm. and uh, nines not and wanting to impose on not people wanting to or, impose exactly yeah. attachment. Um, but at the same time, I think it also does come from a place of insecurity. Like I don't, I don't feel confident enough to tell you what your type is. So it's just up to you. You figure it out. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, trying to describe what say type five is to somebody who can't spot it themselves is like trying to describe what the color blue looks like to somebody who can't see color Mm -hmm. right so yeah it's interesting because uh we just had uh dave powers of objective personality on here and and he made some comments that i thought were interesting about how people don't take this field seriously field of psychology because under scrutiny it's just like you know picking a number out of a hat like so like uh, you say that a type exists and this goes for just about any typology um to a lot of people who are outside of these fields it looks like you're just making stuff up because you there's no way to verify at least in their mind that this type is a real phenomenon instead of something that uh can just be confirm- confirmation bias like you might you might read a quote and say oh that's just like me and so how do you make the distinction that a type like 6 or 9 is a real thing and there's actual um, measurable, observable mm-hmm. distinctions that make that real, uh, and that's a huge gap in the personality field. And you know, the the guys that are, uh, uh, Dave and Shannon, objective personality, have been developing a way to actually track types, and we're essentially doing the same thing uh, of saying that these types, these type structures, are real, and we can break them down. For example, like. People ask sometimes, like, how do I tell the difference between, like, someone being a head type uh, and maybe social? Like, you have these parts, these concepts that you've learned, and you're trying to figure out, like, how do I tell what I'm, like, what this is? Or uh, if this person is exhibiting this distinction or, like, they're social or they're a head type. Now you're asking a question, like, how do I apply this concept to real Mm -hmm. life? How do I see it? And that's something that you have to do in order to figure out that someone is a type or they're not is, all right, what is head type? What is the head center doing? How does that look in a real person? Also, one of the things going back to the school of thought of only you can type yourself is that people say you have to look at your motivations Mm -hmm. behind certain behaviors. But what the Enneagram is getting at is unconscious motivations, right? right. right? And you're not conscious of your motivations. So, but when, when that's said, you know, people think they can just consciously think of what their motivation is behind (laughs) certain qualities or behaviors. And that's really not getting at the layer that the Enneagram is at. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, even like as, as someone who knew the Enneagram, kn- knows the Enneagram pretty well, and uh, I still have difficulty seeing 
parts of my type structure in myself. Yes, yeah, right, and for sure. Yeah. Like I've noticed that a lot of things about eightness I've only been able to see in other eights. Like it's hard for me to even like mm-hmm. wrap my head around eightness by just looking at myself. And so we've done typing videos. We've we looked at other eights. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, man, this person's really aggressive. Like, they're just like, everything they're doing has so much force. I'm like, oh, I do that. (laughs) You know, like, there's so many things that I'm noticing with, like, maybe my sister, who's also an A, that uh, I wouldn't say irritating, but it's like, I'm noticing it in her. And I'm seeing that, oh, shit, like. There's a way we notice it I'm... in you too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't worry. It's like I do that, <laughs> and yeah. and so yeah, like typing or recognizing these type uh, characteristics and distinctions in other people is is gives you the ability to finally see it in yourself. You can't see it in yourself, but if if you can see the type structure uh, playing out in someone who shares your type, then oh, then it starts to illuminate something. It's like I'm doing. Yeah. A version of that as well. Yeah. One, uh, I think I said it in one of the other podcasts is uh, something along the lines of, uh, how, do, how do I say it again? Uh, <laughs> um, uh, that your, your type is the lens through which you're perceiving everything, yes. including yourself. Your so own type, there's yeah. no way to direct the lens of That's your it. type at the lens of your type to know mm, which lens yeah, yeah. it is. Right. Yeah. That's that's exactly. You you're not your type structure, your personality structure is in a sense designed to not see itself. That's right. yes. kind of its job in a sense. So, <laughs> you know, but you can see, you can observe things external to you. I mean, I know it's the same thing. I know my type structure, but it's really only like glimpses where I'll be like Oh, it's almost like you catch some glimmer of understanding of something that you're doing, and then you, it's like you kind of lose it. But I right. can sit here and look at other people with a similar typing and, and just talk about them very easily. Right, right, right. But it's a, you kind right. of lose it when it's about yourself because, yeah, David, like the lens thing is perfect because you can't flip yourself around and look through the other side of the lens. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so what's the point of knowing all this stuff? Like, you know, like learning the Enneagram and learning these concepts, it's cool. Like I, you know what your type is, but what's the point if a year later, two years later, you haven't made any fucking changes. You haven't applied any of this information. And so this stuff becomes significant once you start to think, how do I apply this information? A lot of people in a lot of the coaching calls that we've done, uh, ask this question, like, how do I grow as you know, now that I know that I'm this type. And that question alone starts to, you start to now have to evaluate something in your life and say, I don't like that I'm, you know, I'm having these issues and I'd like to make certain changes to improve on them. And now you're doing something that typing requires, which is you have to look at something that's happening and decide what concept or what typing distinction applies, which means now you have to get into like, you have to accurately determine that what's happening in your life or in this relationship or in this work situation applies to, you know, like maybe attachment to disconnect. It's like, okay, what's attachment to disconnect? And am I doing that right now in this situation? And, and how do I, you know, turn that around? And there are all these, you know, Enneagram distinctions that could apply to a situation. And without practice to recognize them, um, you wouldn't know where to start. And so that's why people come to us. It's like, hey, let me help me understand how I can improve this part of my life based on, you know, the concepts and the knowledge of the Enneagram. This is also why the whole growth thing or what do you do from here thing is why it's so important to get typed accurately. Mm -hmm. um, Because once you get typed accurately, then you can just start that process of catching yourself in the act of, be, being your type, doing your type, seeing through that lens. Mm-hmm. And the more you're catching yourself, doing your type, being your type, the more you can identify with the part of you that's doing that watching, that's outside right. of the type. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've, I've just been thinking about how, like, this is a muscle that, you know, this is the way I got into to the Enneagram was through the lens of typing and I realized how much it fast tracked my ability to 
use the Enneagram and learn the Enneagram because I'm starting from the, from the baseline of how is this applicable to something, uh, which means now I have to learn how the Enneagram works in, in a way that's applicable, which means now if we start talking about like, how do I, how do I determine or um, evaluate a situation in order to type someone, you have to do that. You have to evaluate a situation and you have to decide like what's actually happening here. And that, that means you have to have accurate information, but not just information, but applicable to a situation type of uh, information about what the types are and, and they're not. Yeah, I always say like, it, it, this is maybe my six fix talking or one or whatever, but if, the, if something isn't observable, like something like this, isn't mm-hmm. observable, then it doesn't exist to me. Yeah. It doesn't exist. Right. But if it were easily observable, it would not be useful or interesting at all. You know, yeah. if right. it were just like, yes, I can see that person is wearing a blue shirt. Um, yeah. That isn't helping anyone. Mm-hmm. You know, it has to be observable, but we're talking about observing depth. Yes. And that right. takes a lot of practice and nuance. And it's not enough to understand it. I mean, it's, it's important to understand it, um, but you actually have to be able to perceive, not just retain information about, but in, like consume information in real time about what's happening mm-hmm. with these mm-hmm. concepts. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a practice of, uh, you know, I think typing someone is like, you're observing certain things and you're always thinking, you know, what might that be alluding to? And, you know, these type structures it's not like you'd observe like one thing and say, oh, that's a six. Like six is, this is attachment to disconnect in the head center. So it's like one, it's like, am I seeing the head energy here? And am I seeing attachment? And then you go down even further and say, okay, six is also a reactive type and it's also a super ego type. Mm -hmm. And with enough practice, it's like learning a language where Mm -hmm. you have certain, each type structure has certain rules and with enough time, all those, all those things come together into like an architecture that you can immediately recognize. And so eventually, boom, you, you've seen six enough times. You've seen the combination of head, and head center, attachment to disconnect, reactivity, super ego. You can see those parts together, snap together. It's like, yeah, that's six. And before long, you can recognize six very quickly. And then, so you go through all the, all the uh, nine types. And you eat, like, let's say each one is a, its own language. And you've developed the ability to see the architecture of all those parts coming together. Uh, that's how eventually you can type people and situations consistently and accurately because the types then become like three dimensional pictures that snap into place because you've practiced being able to recognize them. This is also where trifix is important too, because mm-hmm. like when you've seen dozens of sixes with of different trifixes then you can spot all the different versions of six, mm-hmm, you know, for mm-hmm. example. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You also have to be able to, like, understanding the Enneagram, the Enneagram as a concept exists in some kind of abstract, pure way, but we don't experience it that way because we experience everything through our right. own lens of our type and just our own being, our unique being. So, right. you know, when the three of us are typing, for example, the reactions, like like the reactions that we're having to different people and different types are always going to be unique. And that is a mm-hmm. huge part of what it means to even understand the Enneagram. You're not just understanding it in this kind of principled, abstract way. You have to understand what it means to you, how you experience these energies, mm-hmm. like what they do to you. There's actually no way of separating that. Yes. Like my reaction to type six, just to use the same example, there's mm-hmm. no way of separating that from what six is. And mm-hmm. what I am. And they're all connected. And so you, you have to, that's why it's not just a matter of understanding what yeah. six is. You have to see six, hear it, feel it, and be like, that is what six is. And it's going to be different from your understanding. It doesn't mean that it, it could just mean anything. There are these abstract principles that, that stay in place. But we all have our own lens and perception. It's kind of the point of this, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. and that's a subtle development, you mm-hmm. know, an art that takes time to develop is your own using your own reactions to different types and instinctual stackings and trifixes and so forth and and you know trusting in kind of your own internal impressions and sensations and and also 
knowing when you're kind of biasing too hard towards yes something, something right more. right yeah. yeah it's it's like you in order to really absorb and learn something like the enneagram it's like it has to be something that penetrates you like gets under your skin and you have to form your own relationship to each of these types or find where that type is in you or what your reaction is to it so i have a certain reaction to six that um and you know real people or even the ideas around six i have my own reactions around social and so it's real you can really learn like what a type is or what a type uh dynamic or instinctual dynamic is based on your own reaction to it it's like okay what is a social blind spot i can give you a description of what social blindness is but catching yourself reacting I me mean, catching myself reacting to social has been really illuminating it's like something that seems completely normal like you know and comfortable and great to joseph for example just like oh we're gonna create a, a group roster and we're gonna put people's names <laughs> on the list yeah. and i'm noticing yeah that should be fine logically that's fine but i'm having like an instinctual reaction to why you know like don't do that or you know like why about this yeah why would who would anyone would want something like this (laughs) and then of course everyone's into it and it becomes a big thing it's just like oh that's that's what social blindness is there's an aversion to being seen or even seeing myself or even seeing um where you fit in some kind of external um collection or pecking order i don't know Yeah. yeah context or something like that um it's really cool to to observe your own reactions to the types and um, to ha- build your own sort of relationship or to see your own relationship to these types, because yeah. then you can start to like see how this is showing up in your own life. And, and so the kind of thing that we do with, uh, you know, follow up calls where we have to help people see where they're going wrong with their types. Like I'm having to see, I have a problem with social, obviously social blind spot. I have an aversion to seeing myself and that creates problem uh, issues for me, which, which then leads to me not really seeing others, and that creates a whole issue mm-hmm. where I'm not really evaluating people's characters because I'm not putting myself, uh, you know, out there, or right. I'm not really seeing my own character yeah. or valuing myself. Like you're not a myself. person. Yeah, people either. Nobody's a person. Right. And so, yeah, that, that wouldn't have happened unless, uh, you know, like the typing modality or the typing way of doing things uh, to look at the Enneagram that way, it, it forces you to create your own relationship to the Enneagram mm-hmm. distinctions and the type structures and to, to start to be able to observe those dynamics in yourself. Yeah, and everything that we say and that we put out there is still very much our perception of what these types feel like to us. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I I wrote those descriptions Mm -hmm. on the website. We've all written some kind of description in our life. And, you know, people always, I don't relate to this one sentence and this doesn't resonate with me. It's like, you know what? You know, maybe you're not seeing yourself. Maybe the type is wrong. Maybe the description sucks. But at the end of the day, it is really difficult to write descriptions or just even speak descriptions of something like, like if I'm trying to describe type nine, I'm describing billions of people. It's, it's very difficult. Um, and sometimes the stuff that hits home the hardest is kind of hyper specific micro things that we pick out, say on a DAA video or typing that are very specific to you, but we have this sense that they, that those micro specific things relate to this larger concept. But just mm-hmm. sort of talking, you either talk about the larger concept that it doesn't apply to anything, or you start describing a little things that are a little bit more granular, but then the more granular you get, the more people are like, that's not me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? right. So it's really difficult. And that's the thing about descriptions, isn't it? Is that in order to create a description, you have to have real world experience with that type. And what's what's yeah. happening. That's right. What's happening with DAA is that, you know, we're still learning how to uh, describe these types based on what we're noticing with these typings. For example, um, we've done a, a typing class recently on the whole Johnny Depp, Amber Heard case. And we've, she was another example of sexual, social, instinctual stacking. And we've been coming up with this new term of sexual, social drunk, drunkenness. Mm. And that's something that we just landed on just based that's on the it. fact that, that we've been watching. Um, how, do you, how, do you, how do you determine that someone's a sexual type in a situation that all these other celebrities are in, like in a talk show situation? Mm-hmm. What's actually happened that makes this person 
sexual and specifically sexual social. And so you're noticing that there's no groundedness and there's this overspilling quality that happens with sexual social. And so now we're calling it sexual social drunkenness. Mm -hmm. And so that's how, that's how descriptions get made is through these direct experiences. Like people, you know, hang their head on these descriptions, but where do these descriptions come from? They come from people having real life, you know, experiences with these type structures and, and they put it down on paper. That's it. Yeah, there, there are any description, any term, anything, even just whatever. The, the Enneagram, long before we got to it, are just people with their own lenses, whatever, trying to, you know, find a way to encompass these large c- concepts that do mm-hmm. exist in some abstract way. But yeah, again, it's, it's, and you need to understand that, but it does need to get granular in order for you to understand it. And the concepts that we're creating, like sexual, social, drunkenness, like you just might not feel that or see that. You might see the same thing we're seeing and describe it in a different way. Mm-hmm. It makes mm-hmm. you feel a different way. Like, you know, I, that, that started for me. It was when we were doing Jillian Anderson. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I feel like I want to kill her. And I'm not sure why, like she's <laughs> repulsing me. Um, and there was something about, and I kept being like, is she drunk? Is she drunk? And then, and then it happened, it was, it was happening with Meryl Streep too, where I was right. like, for a one, she seems like she's drunk. And I was like, I know that Meryl Streep's not drunk. Um, right. so it was just something, I don't remember which one of us said it first, but it was just something that kind of came where it was like, this is what it feels like to me because I'm social and I have six, one fixes. So I have, I'm a little bit of a Karen and I'm like, this is inappropriate, you know, some part of me that I was mm-hmm. like, I know mm-hmm. myself and I'm like, this is inappropriate. It's too much. Right. <laughs> and then I'm like that's So it's registering to me. So, you know, it, it's, but that came from my own lens. There may be somebody who just, who just would not see that. Mm-hmm. Or call it something different. I call it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the, the Trifix Roast names, you know, wh- wh- how did we come up with that stuff? It means that you have accurately typed someone with this Trifix and you've observed their behavior long enough to see some clear patterns that not just apply to them, but apply to other people who have the same Trifix. And so that's what makes a description good or not, is that person's ability to apply the concept to a real person and not just one real person, like multiple examples of that type like you know john's book has amazing descriptions you could say that those are the best descriptions type descriptions available and yeah. and it's because he has not just the knowledge but he has enough real life um examples that people he knows that are that type and i know how hard he worked on revising and reaching out to people who are accurately typed to make sure that those descriptions were describing real patterns and even beyond that a description is so limited because there's still new things to discover that a dis- someone's, you know, collection of ob- observations hasn't landed on yet. Like, you know, the attachment to disconnect stuff. That's, that's a huge deal. Mm, Shout out to yeah. Xander. <laughs> that's a big addition yeah. to our understanding of attachment types. And that's not in any book. And so you, you can still continue to observe and see things about your type or other types that you won't be able to find in any description that's available. And here's the other thing about attachment types, is that attachment types can identify into lots of type descriptions. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that's yet another thing that causes confusion, yeah. is imagining yourself into various types. And, and I've seen attachment types, you know, retro fit their whole (laughs) past history their whole life (laughs) yeah into whatever type it is they think they are yeah yeah yeah. this week or whatever (laughs) that's why i was thinking maybe that's why you know the quizzes are so flawed because it's really hard to self-reported yeah yeah, it's self-reporting but it's also asking people questions based on certain traits and i was Mm -hmm. wondering if it was possible i mean this is a project down the line if, if this is even worth it or feasible is if you could first start by looking at like these triads. So for example, head center, body center, heart center. If you could just start there and say, can you accurately and consistently divide people into whatever center they're in? Yeah. And if if you could do that and then say, is this, you know, then you go to the next triad and say, you know, if you're in the head center, are you a reactive type, competency type or positive type? You could you could nail the type, 
Because if, if you could design a test that was just based on the structure instead of the description of these traits, then yeah. maybe that could work. I don't know. What do you guys think? I, I don't know. I love one fix. Like I, I always, I want to like apply a pedagogy and, but mm -hmm. you know, we're all expert typers, but when we're sitting on the DA call and we're getting in, or even when we're doing, you know, uh, client typings, I mean, I'd say maybe more than 50% of the time, the first thing we register is like a center, but right. that, I don't know, it doesn't even always happen. Like the amount of times right. that we're like, could be six, could be nine. Like, so these things there, we're trying to see these like hidden layers. And so different things just pop out at different times, depending on what data you get and depending on what, who you are. And, you know, there are times where, yeah, we're like, we know this person's Bermuda, but they could literally be any of those three types. And we have to keep watching for a while. Right. You know, sometimes the trifix hits you, sometimes the infix instinct mm -hmm. hits you, or or you're like, there's yep. definitely a seven seven seven, but like, okay, what you know, so there's just so many ways and and it's that's why it's so difficult. But I just want to say, I mean, I remember learning typing. So, you know, it's a third person in this trio and like starting to learn typing and 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 feeling so lost, just getting mm -hmm. everything wrong and wrong and wrong. And then, you know, one day I was like, guys, is this a six? And you were like, yeah, yeah, that's a six. And I'm like, oh, like, <laughs> yeah. I saw that. I really right. saw, I didn't have to think. It was, I looked at a person and I was like six. And then, you know, they were. And I just thought, wow, this is, this is what it is. It is like, I always use the analogy of colors because colors exist um, and everybody sees them slightly differently, but there is no way to describe blue yeah. that mm -hmm. makes mm -hmm. any sense. We just right. know that it's blue. We know that these concepts are real. Um, but it's really difficult. Like, you know, it's not quite the same because we can obviously just see colors without looking that deeply, but just in the sense of, you know, them existing, but being really hard to pin down without just experiencing them. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. another thing too. You're getting out there with, uh, just being wrong. I've emphasized this before. Mm -hmm. Just, uh, you, you have to be willing to be wrong and then realize when you've been really wrong and then have that update your internal intuition and database, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm, we're, mm -hmm. you know, we're very individualistic here, but it ends up being very democratic in the sense of, mm -hmm. you know, we all have different opinions and different impressions, but like, you know, there's nobody that's dominant here as far as when we're typing someone, uh, you know, we end up coming to the same consensus, you know? Yeah. And it's also, you know, we, we've, been doing this for together for years and so there's a, a level of like you have to trust that this other person's got your yes. back in a way like yeah, that's yeah, like yeah. i'm not yeah. i'm not seeing that's the full true. picture yeah. and i know that you're gonna see things you guys are gonna see things that i don't see and yeah. i can you know like i might have an initial first impression but it's like i you're only holding on to it loosely because you know it's incomplete yep now, now if i was doing a typing by myself it would be like oh man i've got to like I know that I'm not seeing the full picture, so I have to like look, drop it and consider so many different angles. But when I'm typing, when we're typing in a group, it's like, I don't have to know everything because I know yeah. that I've got two other, you know, two other sets of eyes that yeah. are seeing things that I'm not seeing. Yeah. It's like a combo of very much trusting your own impressions and being comfortable with them, mm -hmm. but also very much understanding that those impressions are always up for debate because right. the people with you are going to see things that you don't see and vice versa. So it's like, you want to make sure that you aren't just, okay, yeah, you, you guys are writer. You know, you, you're, you're, right, 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 that, right. you know what, this is something I'm seeing, but I'm not saying that I'm right. I'm just saying that I'm seeing it. Let's figure out what I am seeing. Right. And I, you know, maybe I'm misinterpreting it and, and trusting that. So it is, it's a, it, it's, this is just like, I don't know, basic communication skills, but it's really hard. You know, you, you mm -hmm. see people like it's again, to use the color analogy, you know, that like, you know, it's orange. No, it's red. It's orange. It's red. It's like this kind of back and forth and it's, right, it's right. that kind of thing. But it really is just being like, you know what, maybe it's a fucking combination or maybe, <laughs> you know, or like I, whatever, I, I, the color analogy failed again, but you <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, I would say like when I first got into Enneagram, I was, I got into the Enneagram because I was like, holy shit, people are, you can type people with this stuff. And mm -hmm. I made a, my first Enneagram friend was someone who was also interested in, in typing. And that's how, that's, that's how we became friends. It's just, I would say if anyone who is trying to get, trying to learn how to type, which I think if you're someone who's serious about the Enneagram, you should want to learn how to type because it's going to completely exponentially grow your ability to use the Enneagram. So 
get someone that you can argue about this stuff with. Get, find yeah. someone that right. uh, you know, get a typing buddy, uh, mm-hmm. and because it'll just teach you, like, oh man, like this other person has a different perspective, and that process of landing on the right type. And what happens over time is you realize that these types each have very distinct structures. And what's happening when the three of us get together and we're trying to type someone's like, we know what these types are. And we know that in order to land on, like, for example, seven, you're going to have to see multiple things coming together. And maybe you might think this person's a six. And then all of a sudden your typing partner notices this other thing that contradicts that. And it's like, Oh, all of a sudden it snaps into place. It's, right. Oh yeah. It's, I was close. I was in the head center, mm-hmm. but it's this other head type over here and everything else comes into play. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's seven. Seven because it's positive, it's it's, it's uh, um, frustration, it's mm-hmm. flippant, and you see it all come together. And so once you get really good, the, the type structure can snap into place very quickly once you know, okay, yeah. I need to see head center, I need to see positive triad, I need to see hexad, I need to see, you know, all these different things. You get good at noticing them when you're typing in a group. And there's a euphoria to that too, like the feeling of like, I see it. It's clear. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm not sitting here waffling, trying to figure out what it is. When it's right, it is like, yep, yeah, there it is. Done. Yeah. Like it's yeah. like seeing blue, right? And so that's why this whole thing about, um, you know, the conversation around typing becomes more about, I people react to it because it seems more about like, you can't tell me what my identity is. Mm-hmm. And for someone who's getting into the thick of it, is like these types are just a collection of concepts and distinctions and and personality dynamics. Like six isn't just like oh six is a uh, someone who doubts themselves. Six is a collection of these dynamics that are interwoven together. And so to say that someone is a six is not just to put a label on them. It's to say that you're exhibiting these type dynamics in concert. Like there is the head center. Yes. There is the attachment to disconnect. There is the super ego um, morality. There's the reactivity, and so it's and so when you're doing like a follow up session with that person, that's what you're narrowing down on is like you're not just a six because we said you're a six. We're you're, we're noticing this collection of type structure dynamics that come together that makes up what six is, and so that's why when people talk about like how can you guys be so sure that you're getting these right. It's like, well, one, that sort of gives away how little that person understands how intricate the Enneagram is because the, each type is so different from totally. you know, the next one that if you can yeah. somehow narrow down on what someone's type is, you're going to have to check a bunch of boxes of different things that have to be observable in that person. So it's really hard, if you, especially with the team of people, to make a mistake on somebody's core type because that you have to get narrowed down to so many you know, essential things to, to, to see a type in someone. Then it's a question of how can you observe those dynamics? And if you can figure out how to observe those dynamics and recognize them, now you've started, you've learned what those things are. Now the Enneagram has become, come alive to you in a real way that you can say, this person's doing attachment to disconnect in the head center because they're, this behaviors, these behaviors repetitive behaviors are head center attachment to disconnect that's six that's that's what you're able to now like evaluate a situation or relationship or an issue being able to recognize what's going on mm-hmm. anyway uh yeah did, i guess we can more on your list i guess what happens if you don't learn how to type if i mean because there are a lot of people who don't have an interest in this we're saying that you pretty much on some level need to learn how to do this yeah you don't know the enneagram truly Mm -hmm. if you don't know how to type Mm -hmm. so right and that's another thing too that um as a social blind that i take for granted that there are all these characters fictional characters and movie characters that people really understand and you know typing Mm -hmm. fictional characters seems like a waste of time but it's really useful because there are these archetypes that exist in people's minds that if you could say that's six. And it's like, oh, or even just like someone you know really well. And if they get typed, yes. you're like, oh, I've known you from, you know, for over a decade. That's and the only I way. Did, yeah, I didn't understand what this meant. But now that I know that you're seven, it's like it all makes sense. Now I understand a little bit what seven's about. And so you can go from there and build like your, your own internal map of what the Enneagram really is. These, 
fictional characters, you are reacting to them almost in the same way that you'd react to a real person. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So, yeah, the only thing with fictional characters is that the huge caveat is that many of them just are not of like a a very specific type because the writing is not consistently in a type or the actor Mm -hmm. is a different type than the character and so, so on. But like, if you can find, there are lots of characters that are very much through and through a type. Um, Mm -hmm. And if you can highlight those, you know, I have some like, you know, six, sevens and nines. There's going to be so many that you can point out in that, that even just learning those three types teaches you tons about the whole world and the Enneagram. Mm -hmm. So um, there are lots of people that you can point out that are consistently, people are always surprised to hear like, you know, what, what fictional characters are there that are fours? It's like, well, almost none, because frankly, most people live their whole life without ever meeting a core four. You're going to encounter lots of four fixed energy, but not a core four. So mm-hmm. as a writer, when you're writing these fictional characters, you are drawing on experiences that you already have with people in some way. And if you've never met somebody who is a four or a five or some of those pretty rare types, um, maybe even a two, whatever, you're not going to be able to, it's not just that they don't do well on TV. Sometimes they don't, but um, you may not have an experience of what that looks like in its core form. And mm-hmm. you're not going to find an actor who has that type, you know, it's so on and so on. And so, but um, sorry, this is a huge tangent actually. Yeah. Yeah. It creates an, it, it creates a feedback loop of inaccurate perspectives yeah, on what right. types yeah, are, that's important. Yeah. you know, like if, if you have like, for me, it was so important. It's like, if I could have an accurate framework, of what these types were doing in reality, then it meant that I could walk into a situation and know what the hell's going on. Like this person's doing this mm-hmm. type, you know, this is what they're really after. Then you can make better decisions. You can not just in, in um, your own life, but just to be able to evaluate situations and like, okay, this person's not just annoying. Uh, I'm having a reaction because they're, uh, you know, completely being vague and and just not non-committal to a set of plans like they're that's that's what a nine would be doing i could just say oh i think they're a nine but i'm getting more specific as to what exactly is going on with this person that's setting me off in terms okay mm-hmm. they're doing the nine thing of being vague and non-committal and and uh being too slow or whatever and it's like okay i, I don't have to react and say oh this person's dumb it's like i can i see where that's coming from that's <laughs> that's coming from that's a nine personality type. All right. Okay. I'm not dumb. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, why is this person so slow? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so if you, if you, what happens if you don't learn how to type is that you could, uh, you don't have any grounding to apply the Enneagram. And if you're not applying the Enneagram, you don't know the Enneagram. This is not one of those things. It's just mm-hmm. like cool knowledge to just put in your back pocket. If you're not using this stuff, it's you're going to get bored and move on. It's not going to have any impact on you. Yeah. So you have to find a way to apply this stuff. And in order to apply it, you have to, like typing is taking a concept, you know, like a concept exists in abstract reality and taking it and lining it up with, with reality itself and saying like, how do I match abstract reality to something that's actually happened in an accurate way? Because then you take the model and you apply it to something that's happening. Right. That's when it becomes powerful. And so if you don't learn how to accurately match the concepts that you're learning to what's happening in real life, then this, this system is just mental masturbation. Yeah. And, also, and it's, it's a loop because reality also creates the model and mm-hmm. shapes the model. Yes, yes, so yes. not only do you have to apply it, but you have to be able to apply it and see it to the point where you can actually consistently refine it right that's what we're doing like yes, all this exactly. this content like you know people are like amazed as how this group is able to generate the kind of content that it generates and it's so important that we st- first of all we started this group because we were so annoyed and disgusted by the fact that groups are just <laughs> rife with you know people mistyping themselves uh, it's just a huge epidemic of, oh, I, I, people talking from their own experience as if that experience was a certain type and it's completely not. And so if you're trying to learn the Enneagram, you get on a fucking forum and someone says, oh, as a four, I've just been lamenting <laughs> that nobody likes the shirt that I wore. To, you know, Fours just like- have never said as a four. So that's, that's start there. <laughs> right. No one, as a four is not a phrase that you're ever going to hear. Right. Don't hear 
It's not going to happen. <laughs> as this category that millions of other people identify with <laughs> as that same category so but that I'm you an know <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that I'm just like you. <laughs> uh, that, shout that out to all my fours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> shout out to all my fellow fours. Fellow fours. That's my favorite one. <laughs> my fours. fellow fours. All the fields. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag yeah. oh, all the fields. No. <laughs> <laughs> So, I don't have feelings. I just have anger and frustration, <laughs> hatred. Frustration. I don't so, have other feelings. Yeah. So I was like, it's completely useless if there's a forum of people who uh, identify themselves with the wrong type. And so what ends up happening and why our group is so special is that uh, if people can accurately identify their types, now it means that you're confronting something real. And now it means that real conversations about what these types are can happen. And so we're discovering yeah. so much about these types because... We have created an environment where accuracy is more important than keeping up with some kind of delusional mm -hmm. identity of what type you might want to be. And so we're discovering so much cool stuff because we have made this the foundation of That's what it. we're doing is that we need to know what these types actually are so that we can actually discover more about what these types actually are. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we're, we've created a lot of new concepts, a little plug for us, but we're not doing it just because we like new shit. It's, you know, mm -hmm. this idea of whatever, like all the things that we've created, uh, um, uh, sin flow, counter flow, overlay, uh, drunken, like all these different terms, mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. Um, I mean, these are all things that we're creating because we're not creating them. We're just observing them. We're noticing them. them. Yes. We're noticing them. Yeah, exactly. We're, we're just observing them and then, and then kind of bringing them out into existence in terms of explaining them, but they are there. And in order to discover, like, you know, you can't just be like, oh, you know, I saw somebody that I thought was a seven, but they were nothing like seven. So I guess seven isn't what it is or whatever. <laughs> like it's, it's about applying that model in this, in a way that makes sense, but also allowing it to teach you more about itself. Yes, yes, yes. There's so much to learn and there's so many things that we haven't discovered and we've Mm, no. added some really you know totally. like attachment to disconnect is a huge deal to me like a big deal and we're still learning like hex ad versus attachment uh that has changed so much and oh, yeah. improved our typing skills and there's so much that we've learned about uh that we've they've been able to apply to typing that's made us even way sharper than we've been years prior i've been into the enneagram for 30 years and it it's not stopping in terms of revealing new things. It's amazing. And, and I I wouldn't want to go back to where I was just even two months ago. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like just new yeah. stuff keeps coming all the time. Yeah. Like I, I I part when I say that we live the Enneagram is that you know, I'm still learning what some of these types really are. Like, you know, it's like yeah. I know these types based on, you know, the information I've been exposed to and some of the experiences I've had. I, but I know that there's so much more that I don't understand. Like, you have certain experiences with people that are like, I don't get why this person's doing this, even though I know they're this type. And, and then that begins uh, a journey where I'm like, there's something missing here that I don't yet understand about this type. And then may maybe eventually you connect some dots. And you give it a name, and that's how a new concept is born. So, you know, I want to talk more about like what typing really is. It's it's like typing seems like this mysterious thing that people put off to the corner, but it's really integral to understanding the enneagram and applying it. And we talk about this stuff in Dark Arts Academy every single week. We type a celebrity. We um, you can if people sometimes wonder like how are you guys typing people, you can watch us do that every week and there's so many nuggets that just as we're discussing the things right. that we're picking up and people i mean we're still learning every week <laughs> as yeah. we're doing this even just doing things like if you can type somebody as a seven for example mm -hmm. and you're like you know in in the past however many years i've been dating and then you see a seven and another seven now you have experience going on dates with five different yes. sevens, and they actually have <laughs> very specific behaviors that i think right. are are specific to seven that I'm starting to pick up on. And right. that's interesting for my life, but also at some point one day a light bulb's gonna go on and it's gonna teach me something elemental about right. what seven is because I was able to type them properly and then actually absorb that information in the, in the proper place. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's a great point. Like how much typing has, uh, you know, just that ability to look at somebody and, and figure out what their type is how that changes so many experiences like dating is a different experience now because you kind of yeah, know what what is coming you kind of know what right. the issues are going to be 
once you've had enough experience. It's not to say that you've already figured this person out, but you have a framework for what to expect. Yeah. Yeah. You know, David, like you, because you've been doing this for a long, long, long time. Uh, what would you say, like in the last maybe two years, would you say that in terms of typing, ever since we started doing this, that there's been a huge shift? I mean, I guess there has been, but I guess I'm just trying to get your impression of it. A, a shift in my uh, whatever capacities or use of the or, Instagram or what or in the, what? The, in terms of typing, how much we've like grown in terms of what we've been seeing with through typing since you know typing together and how much all the new things that we've discovered in the last few years. Would you say that the last few years there's been an acceleration of yeah. discoveries? Big acceleration around. Um, especially trifix once mm-hmm. you get a sense um or that's the main thing that comes to mind at this moment asking that question um once you get a sense of what those are as you know amalgamations or whatever uh that becomes you know uh 27 more types or whatever the number mm-hmm, is mm-hmm. you know what i mean and it's and they're very distinct um and it's another it's it's another angle to you know sort of turn the prism in, mm-hmm. in your hand of looking at somebody and and uh seeing what's going on with them and it just uh just explains so much and it and it's so specific and colorized and stylized um that you know sometimes that's what comes through first is somebody's right trifix and not their core type or what center they're in or something like that um what else i mean some of the stuff with the dark arts like we've been talking about you know just different phrases and ideas um and and the three of us typing together you know clients paid clients and so forth um just certain things start to solidify um in terms of being able to recognize things but yeah no there's been a definite acceleration the the trifix roasts that Mm -hmm. actually was really important i think it started with john and dj and right right and and kind of congealed uh a little more firmly because of that and that sort of launching pad um that was really significant and and my trifix booklet is you know kind of riffing off of some of those names a little bit Mm -hmm. in an oblique way um but anyway yeah that's some of how i'd characterize the last couple of years yeah i feel like there's been a huge acceleration uh and that's come from all of us working together and uh and getting so many different perspectives and not just between the three of us, but just seeing some of the insights that people are adding in the group of Xander with attachment to disconnect. And right. uh, this environment that we've created that's based around accurate typing now makes it uh, gives clear insight to what's going on with these types. And it helps people to see that there's more to discover. There's more to pick out as to what these types are doing. Yeah. I'd say that, I mean, that's the other huge one, of course, is the, Hexad versus attachment thing. Yeah, that's probably like the biggest, most impactful thing over the last couple of years. And you know, it's it's almost horrifying how <laughs> how major that, that whole is. thing is yeah. and that distinction. Yeah. It's like, oh Huge. my god! It's the yeah. most it's, important thing. Yeah, that to learn about the enneagram when you're first starting. I can't yeah. think of besides yeah. like the centers. Yeah, and that's just in the last couple of years. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, and mm-hmm. nobody else has it. There's not another group no. that kind of has the full sense of what that is about or has even heard of it. I mean, it's such an important thing because the the assumption of most everything that we're experiencing out there is from the from the point of view of attachment. And, you know, we run this group primarily with a lot of hexad influences, so it's really important for us to understand hex ad versus attachment but it's also really important for uh, attachment types to sort of like uh see the thing that's invisible that everyone kind of assumes is normal mm-hmm. that there are certain types that are not operating from that point of view um so it may not seem to like a big deal to attachment types because it's like the world is run on these assumptions like mm-hmm. but 
it's a big deal for those of us who might be struggling to understand. I don't understand people. I don't understand why people right. are this way. You know, like that was a huge deal for me. A big, big deal. It's still a huge deal for attachment types just because it's, regardless of what your type is, when you learn about attachment, you're learning about the whole fucking world and the history mm-hmm. of civilization and <laughs> human behavior in, <laughs> in, in, in a way that is so mind-blowing to me when you actually start to see it and yeah. experience it that you're just like, holy shit, this is everything. This is mm-hmm. everything. Um, so it doesn't even, you know, it's not even just about yourself. You're just kind of looking around and being like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah, 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 yeah. It's a whole yeah. new world. Yeah, <laughs> and so it, it's I guess to, to wrap this whole thing up, like typing right. has been the engine for all this these new discoveries. Right. Like it's right. been the driving force exactly. behind a lot of the things that we're able to observe. Is like we are throwing ourselves into observing people. Like why is this person acting this way? And having these sharp distinctions is like we're have we're getting sharper and sharper every single year as to what these types are and what they're not. And we're able to notice new things that we didn't see before. So like, if you really, really want to learn the Enneagram, like this is something you have to do. You have to practice this. And so before I had any of these resources available to me, I was trying (laughs) and failing obviously, but I was still trying to type people, like uh, taking notes and trying to like, you know, what is eight? Like what makes eight different from other types? Like you know like trying to get down to it and just that intention alone and now we have all these resources we have we have our database we have um our descriptions um you can watch interviews you can watch us type people there are all these different modalities and ways that you can start practicing typing all right great what's the next time we're supposed to meet we have done three meetings in the past 24 hours <laughs> i don't want to talk to you guys for a while <laughs> yeah <laughs> we're done. Yeah. Uh, the I next time is, is yeah. <laughs> next time is uh, Tuesday. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. This was a good one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Okay. Okay. Bye, Bye. Bye guys.